Your friends are excited because fantasy football is here and they think they found some great picks. But oh boy, are they just flat out wrong. And this is great news for you because these are seven players that you need to let your idiot friends draft in 2023. And we start with Mike Williams, the Chargers wide receiver, who is currently 28 years old, but in October, so just basically a month into the season, he'll be turning 29. And this is important because as a study shown here on the fantasy footballers website, wide receivers won by age their fantasy points. They just start to drastically drop once you start to turn 27 you can see at 26 years old it's the most points you're going to average your prime and then 27 28 29 they start to significantly drop down and this is right where mike williams is and we've already seen him drop because williams saw a significant efficiency drop last year his target rate which is his ability to earn targets per route was just 20.9 percent 52nd in the nfl that's a 15 percent drop from the previous year a trend that we normally see as wide receivers start to see the downside of their career but that's not all because because the Chargers are already looking to replace him. They spent their first round pick on a wide receiver, Quinton Johnson, out of TCU, who was the best big ball wide receiver in this class. And look, Johnson's only 21 years old, so he's seven years younger. Obviously, as a rookie, will be a younger player, but he's also much more explosive. Because as you can see from the player profile workout metrics, he has above average speed, which is nice, but his burst, 98th percentile, top 2% of all time, Mike Williams comes nowhere near this. And he was productive last year at TCU for an offense that didn't throw all that much while also being banged up in some games over a thousand yards 60 receptions and he was one of the best jump ball receivers in college football last year and here's the evidence of that from player profiler his college yards per reception 18 and a half yards per catch every time this guy had a catch on average it was going for 18 and a half yards absolutely nuts so mike williams replacement has already been drafted and as a first round pick we'll probably see some time this year but it's not like that's going to be williams only competition because of course the chargers have a good wide receiver room where keenan allen is still going to be the de facto wide receiver one especially when he operates out of the slot and then this is austin eckler's receiving share he saw 18.9 percent of the targets last year the second most of any running back in the nfl so basically mike williams is at best the wide receiver three potentially the wide receiver four at some point this year with quentin johnson now there so instead of taking mike williams as the wide receiver 23 just take terry mclaurin who actually goes after him you could probably even get him around later now this next man up is somebody that your friends have been jumping up and down to draft and it's a mistake and that would be kyle pitts the atlanta falcons tight end who right now goes as a top five tight end in drafts and if for some reason you don't believe me just check it out right here it goes tj hawkinson as the tight end three then george kittle and then kyle pitts top five which is of course interesting because last year he only finished 22nd in fantasy points per game of course only having two receiving touchdowns will be a reason for that but still outside the top 20 despite finishing outside the top 20 he was quietly great last year because he was extremely efficient among tight ends pitts was fifth in yards per route run number one in targets per route and number one in tight end deep targets so why did he finish so poorly well let's discuss it starts with the fact that the atlanta falcons threw the second fewest times in the league only the bears had less pass attempts the falcons throwing just 415 times compared to some of the average teams in the nfl throwing nearly 600 times and this led to just 5.9 targets per game for Pitts. so even though he was earning targets pretty easily per route he just wasn't seeing enough volume and it doesn't help that he was playing in a bottom 10 efficiency offense due to the quarterbacks that were in atlanta last year which led to less red zone drives and only two touchdowns for Pitts. and the issue issue is this probably isn't going to change because with the eighth overall pick in the NFL draft they drafted a running back and the best running back in college football for a while in Bijan Robinson just a glimpse of how good Bijan is last year at Texas he had over 1500 rushing yards over 300 receiving yards basically 1900 total yards and 20 total touchdowns so all of the Falcons actions are stating that they want to run even more than they did last year when a later round rookie in Tyler Algier went for over a thousand yards on the ground and almost 1200 total yards so yeah Bijan's probably going to have success which means less passing volume yardage and touchdowns for Kyle Pitts and it's not like his quarterback situation this year is going to get much better Taylor Heineke was actually worse than Marcus Mariota was last year somehow and Desmond Ritter is pretty inexperienced in the NFL and in his four starts last year didn't look all that great and this doesn't even get into the fact that Drake London a top 10 pick from last year is still out there and he actually earned more targets per game than Pitts last year so your takeaway is that despite Pitts being the most efficient tight end last year he still struggled again he finished outside the top 20 of fantasy points and the team's actions suggest that they're gonna have a similar offense this year so just pass up on him at this price so that's a popular tight end that you should just let your idiot friends draft and also this quarterback avoid him
him as well. Everybody loves Anthony Richardson. He is now a Colt. He was taken with a top 10 pick in the draft, and he currently goes right now as the top 10 quarterback in fantasy drafts ahead of guys like Tua, Dak. You can keep scrolling down and see Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins will start to pop up as well. I mean, these guys should not go after Anthony Richardson. And the simple reason why that we'll dive into right now is because he's being drafted at his ceiling. This is probably the highest that he'll be able to score this year. Now, let's not get it twisted. Anthony Richardson, as you can see right here from Kent Lee's tweet, Anthony Richardson, a QB prospect in 2023, he scored a 10 out of 10 on relative athletic score, making him the number one ranked quarterback athlete of all time at the combine. And this led to the Colts taking him with the fourth overall pick in the draft because he has some upside. As player profilers workout metrics show, obviously the most athletic quarterback, not only because of his size, but look at this, his speed, top one percentile, and his burst. No quarterbacks have burst. He has insane burst, 99th percentile. And Richardson last year had 654 rushing yards. That's 55 rushing yards per game. And mobile quarterbacks that have big arms like Anthony Richardson, they are the cheat code in fantasy football. But like I said, he's being drafted at his ceiling because he has major flaws. He completed just 54% of his passes last year outside the top 140 college quarterbacks and 3.6% of his passes were intercepted, three times more than the average first round QB. So just take Geno Smith instead here because there's no guarantee that Richardson will even start the season or play in all the games. Next up is a veteran wide receiver in Odell Beckham Jr. who currently goes right now in round nine ahead of Jacoby Myers and Zay Jones. And this is a major mistake because Odell Beckham Jr. is 30 years old and he'll be 31 years old this year in November about midway through the season. And let's not forget, he's coming off of a torn ACL during the Super Bowl, February 13, 2022. This is his second torn ACL and he's 31 years old. We have not seen Odell play football since the Super Bowl, which was February 13th of 2022. That will be 18 plus months since he's last played. And when we last saw Odell in 2021, it wasn't great. Sure, he had a good start to the Super Bowl, but on his bigger sample of the entire 2021 season, his yards per route run, wide receiver efficiency, 77th in the NFL. And now he's two years older off of another knee injury. He struggled to consistently separate and get yards after the catch. And now he has much more competition. And that competition, as you can see in the wide receiver position to start with, Rashad Bateman and Zay Flowers is pretty dang tough. We'll start with Zay Flowers because this first round rookie is insanely productive. His college dominator was 47%, meaning he had 47% of his team's offensive production, yardage, receptions, touchdowns, insane. And then let's not forget at the tight end position, you have Mark Andrews, who since 2020 has the second most tight end targets behind only Travis Kelsey with 354. He's basically the wide receiver one on this team. And lastly, you have Rashad Bateman coming off of injury, who I don't think is a great fantasy pick, but in real life, he's going to be competition because before his injury last year, 2.59 yards per route run was top five in the NFL. Then there's the fact that he's dealing with a mobile quarterback in Lamar Jackson, which normally leaves less out there for your pass catchers and yardage and touchdowns. So just draft Jacoby Myers or especially Zay Jones instead. Now, the next guy that you should let your idiot friends draft is Rashad Penny, who is now an Eagle. Because Penny currently goes in round nine and he's taken before guys like Damian Harris, Devon A. Chain, and even Elijah Mitchell, which is a mistake and let's discuss. Simply put, the Eagles did not fork over the money and made no investment in Penny. Look, Penny signed a one-year deal worth just 1.3 million, but his guaranteed money was just $600,000. And recently, James Robinson on a similar deal was cut by the Patriots. So these teams don't really care about this few amount of money spent. Penny's deal was actually less guaranteed money than his new teammate in Boston Scott, who's like the running back four on this team. And this is important because it means they aren't incentivized to use Penny. He could even be cut and he's definitely replaceable by whoever is performing. And he's got some tough competition of guys who can perform well, like DeAndre Swift, who was traded for a fourth round pick during the NFL draft to the Eagles, who was literally the second most productive running back just a year ago, very quietly averaging 6.3 yards per touch. Again, the second most in the NFL. And Penny also has to deal with with Kenneth Gainwell, who was a running back who they trusted the most in the Super Bowl, actually led this backfield in touches. You can see right here his seven carries and even added four receptions for 20 yards as well. So he had 11 total touches in the Super Bowl. If they trusted him in that game, yeah, they're going to trust him during the season this year. And let's not forget Jalen Hurts is there. He was top five in red zone rushing last year, which kind of hurts the bigger back in Penny's upside for touchdowns. The takeaway here is that Penny could honestly be cut. So just avoid him in round nine. And he's also missed 51% of his games because of injury. All right, next up, we're going to go to the wide receiver position. And I have a feeling this one might make some people upset. And that would be Gabe Davis, the Bills wide receiver, who is interesting. But across three seasons with Josh Allen right now and in his career, his fantasy points per game hasn't been a top 35 receiver, hasn't shown fantasy upside. And here's what you need to know. He was extremely efficient yet again in 2022. Davis ranked 68th at earning targets per route and was 67th at getting open versus man coverage. And he now enters 2023 with added competition. Of course, there's Stefan Diggs, who in three straight seasons has gone over 150 
targets that he still has to compete with. So there's no way Davis is the wide receiver one. And in the first round, the Bills selected Dalton Kincaid, a tight end out of Utah, the only tight end taken in the first round. That high of draft capital on a tight end means you'll be involved. And Kincaid was a mega producer in college. His college dominator, he saw 34% of his offense's production as a tight end, which is top 5% of all time. This translated to him seeing 70 catches last year for nearly 900 yards and earning 22% of Utah's targets. And believe it or not, the Bills even went out and got improvement at the wide receiver three spot, which is going to push one Gabe Davis. They have second year player Khalil Shakur, but they went out and signed Deontay Hardy, who believe it or not, is an uber efficient receiver. In his last healthy season, he ranked second in yards per route run in 2021 behind only Devontae Adams. And he was number two at getting open versus man coverage, something we just said that Gabe Davis struggles doing. Honestly, Hardy reminds me a lot of a wide receiver who had success with Josh Allen in the Bills in 2019 and John Brown. In that season, John Brown had over 70 catches and over a thousand receiving yards. There was no Stefan Diggs, so you must point that out, but it shows that this type of receiver can have success with Josh Allen. So here's your takeaway. Davis is just a boomer bust field stretcher. But despite this, he's taken a round or ahead of guys who have real upside in Jahan Dotson and Brandon Cooks because they're good route runners who know how to get open. And Davis's ceiling is absolutely capped when you're playing next to Stefan Diggs. And now there's added competition. Just avoid him. Now, before we get to the next player that you're going to want to avoid, I got to let you know about this. If you would like to win your fantasy league and dominate your friends for a championship, the fantasy blueprint is for you because it contains all the tools and analysis you need to do just that. Just like you can see here for my wide receiver tiers with ADP values and avoids highlighted on here. This is just like 5% of what you get. And it's simple to acquire. You just click the link in the description below and follow the two simple steps. And if you do not make your fantasy playoffs, I'll just refund the minimum deposit. That's only $5 for all the draft help you need and all the week help you need all 17 weeks into your fantasy playoffs. This is risk free. So go ahead and get your fantasy blueprint down below. And now let's get back to the video. And also avoid the Lions second year player in Jamison Williams, who as a rookie last year only played in six games. So he missed 11 games. It led to just nine targets across six active games. He didn't play a lot because he was coming off of an ACL that he suffered in January of that same year in the college football playoffs. So Detroit was cautious with ramping him back up. And just the honest truth is there's not a great track record of second year receivers who missed so much time their first year breaking out in their second year. And now Davis is also going to miss significant time in his second year, at least a third of the season because he was suspended for violating the NFL's gambling policy for six games. This is not good news. So look, I get the upside that Jamison is an exciting college prospect. He went to Alabama. Everybody got to watch him play a lot, but he goes ahead of guys like Juju and Cortland Sutton who are just not going to miss six games and have a chance to be their team's wide receiver one, where there's absolutely zero chance that Jamison will be his team's wide receiver one because that mantle is taken up by a top 10 fantasy wide receiver and maybe even top five by the end of this year in Amon Ross St. Brown, who's coming off of a season where he had 146 targets over nine per game, top 10 in the NFL, but that's not all. Because when you look at his last 22 games, so his last six games of his rookie year as well, he ranked second in the NFL in targets. The translation here is that Jamison has capped upside once he returns. So these are seven players that you just want to stay away from. Let your idiot friends draft them instead. But if you want to see seven wide receivers that you need a target and they're taken after round four, but have top 10 upside, take a look at this video right here and make sure that you have that subscribe button hit so that you can stay up to date on all the latest info from this channel to beat your buddies.